Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. I hope everybody is having a good start to their week, staying healthy, staying optimistic and working through your challenges. Uh, welcome Namaraj, uh, hello uh, Zoid and welcome Musil Manka. Please do use English in the chat as we're all learning English here and of course if you're preparing for the IELTS you should be at an intermediate level of English or higher and all the more reason to use English in the chat and in this class. One of the most important steps to success in the IELTS exam is to keep using and practicing the English language. Welcome Jainil, hi Alpha Forest. Pratamesh, nice to see many of our members. Welcome everyone. In this class, we are focusing on speaking part one and I'm going to tell you what you need to do to make sure that you begin your speaking interview uh, with a band nine. Welcome, Nico. Uh, as usual, our class is presented to you by aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. Uh, for academic IELTS and for general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. That's generalieltshelp.com. On both of those websites, we have lots and lots of help for you uh, to improve your English, vocabulary, grammar, and your communication. We help thousands of students daily to pass their IELTS tests. Uh, this is our academic website here with the blue background. All you have to do is click that big red button to join the premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. It's not very expensive and definitely worth the investment. For general IELTS, it's the green background. Again, you just click that big red button, one-time payment, lifetime access. We are an IELTS British Council Test Registration Center and we are trained British Council agents. All right, uh, Anurag, yeah, you can prepare for the IELTS in 20 days. It's not a lot of time, but as long as you have good English and you focus on doing practice exams, improving communication, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can prepare in 20 days. Our shortest um, study plan on our websites, Anurag, is a 30-day study plan. We have a 30, 60 day study plan and we're working on a 90 day study plan as well. So ideally you start about 90 days before. Uh, just really quickly students, when you sign up and you can try our website for free as well, uh, you can access your My Student account. And once you're in your My Student account, you have uh, computer-based practice exams, full online course, lesson videos, audio CDs. There's about three, 400 hours of materials. And you have this here, this is free for everyone. It's called Student Partner uh, Speaking. And when you click on that Student Partner Speaking, then you will be redirected to another page uh, where you can video chat or audio chat with other IELTS students. Right now, Hassan, Asma, D. Rose, and Mahmoud are waiting for somebody to video chat and practice some IELTS speaking. There's almost always someone here waiting. Um, so uh, definitely use it, check it out, okay? Uh, because it's a speaking class, I thought I'd just show you that real quick. It's very, very useful. Okay, getting back to it. Um, if you have questions, uh, let me know. Um, Adrian at aehelp.com, that's my email. Just send me an email and uh, I will respond as soon as possible. Uh, new in Kyber Xursheet, nice to see you. Onisim in the class, nice to see many of our regular students. Okay, students, so quite a big announcement today. Um, we'll just take a minute for this before we get into our speaking strategies and questions. Uh, by the way, this is a speaking class, so feel free to speak and repeat. Um, copy my pronunciation, my intonation, my fluency. I use uh, West Coast, Northwest Coast Canadian English. It's very similar to the English in uh, Northwest Coast US, like Seattle, even San Francisco. Uh, you'll hear very, very similar types of uh, pronunciation and slang is what I'm using. Um, all right, I have lots of friends from Los Angeles. They speak virtually identical English uh, to myself. All right, so um, big announcement here. Just please pay attention to this for the next couple of weeks. So our schedule from March 17th to April 10th 
Um, it's changing quite a bit. So we have the speaking part one uh, right now. And then between March 18, so from tomorrow all the way till April 6th, there's no live classes. But we will be releasing some really fantastic uh, new HD videos on our channel for the speaking section. Uh, so definitely check those out. We'll have a few different, we'll have three different releases uh, between now and that time. So check those out. Those are going to be great for your learning. And the reason why is I'm moving my office. So I'm moving my home studio from Budapest back to my place of origin, uh, which is Victoria, uh, Canada on the West Coast. So I'm going to be back there by the end of this month. And of course, because of COVID and quarantine and all of that jazz, it's quite a tricky adventure back, uh, moving in office, but I have to do it. Now's the right time, um, even though it's challenging. So uh, the next live class will be after today on April 7th, and that will also be a speaking part one, like today. Thank you, Onisim, for your uh, safe travel wishes. I appreciate that, yeah. Um, and, uh, the class schedule, we did, a um, we did a poll, we did a survey on our YouTube channel and 50% of our viewers voted, uh, that the best time for them to have classes is between four and five AM universal time. Okay. So that's universal standard time, uh, four and five, which is basically 8 PM for me in Victoria, Vancouver time, but that's okay. So I'll do, I'm going to be working in the evening, but for many of you, that's going to be the morning. So, um, so that's when we'll do it. If it doesn't work or if we need to adjust, it's totally fine. We'll do some uh, feedback sessions. And if we have to do uh, classes at different times, we will, as long as it's not in the middle of the night, of course. So we do have our schedule all according to universal time. Um, it's really easy to convert your time to universal time. Just type in UTC and it'll tell you what time it is. Um, so we'll have lots of classes coming up after the seventh. So seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th, of course, given that everything goes well. Okay. All right. Uh, Munawar will talk about how to not get confused. Uh, this new schedule and this information is also on our YouTube community board. So you can check it out there. Um, and, uh, if you have questions, post it and so on. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's get into it. Yeah. Tanya, I mean, it might not work for everyone, but we'll, we'll try to do our best so that it works for most people. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sammy, it's also on Instagram. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so Let's do this. Let's get into today's speaking class. So the speaking uh, section of the IELTS usually, I mean, they say it takes 15 minutes, but honestly, I think it's closer to 12 minutes, um, especially if there are lots of students sitting the test. So the examiner takes about 12 minutes to measure your English speaking ability. That is not a lot of time to assess somebody's speaking Um 12 minutes, especially if you're not using English before the exam. So my first tip to everybody is make sure you're using English, meaning speaking English, um, for hours and hours before your speaking interview. Otherwise it's really hard to show top notch English in just the 12 minutes that you have with the examiner. Okay. All right. Um, next Cheyenne is asking, I took seven in IELTS last year, but I need more than that. If I take the IELTS again, is that going to affect my previous score? Well, your most recent score is also a valid score, but your previous score next Cheyenne is valid for two years as well. So if you get a lower score, use your previous score. They're independent from each other. Okay. All right. Tanya says, I'm a morning person. That's great, Tanya. I mean, if you wake up super early, um, yeah, the, as they say, Tanya, early bird catches the worm, right? So uh, I like getting up early and going for a run myself. Okay, everyone, so you get into your speaking interview. Let's warm up, let's do this together. Let's get our speaking muscles going a little bit. 
Um, so you walk into your IELTS exam, and even if you showed your identification um, earlier for registration, there's a very good chance that the examiner will get you to show your uh, identification again, especially in the face-to-face -face interview, okay? So the examiner will start with this question always because if you don't have your identification, you cannot sit the exam. So um, the first question is, may I see your identification, please? So may I see your identification, please? And give a nice full sentence answer for this. Why? Why is it really important to give a nice full sentence answer and not just go yes? Okay, there's a couple important reasons and I've told many students this before. So why should you always give a nice full sentence to this question of can I see your identification? Okay, Onisim says yes, of course, this is the passport I used to register online for the IELTS exam. Kyber says yes, here's my identification card which I used for online registration. Please have a look. Uh, Mohammed Azad says, yes, certainly. Here's my passport. Please have a look. Alpha Forest says, yes, of course. Here's the passport I used at the time of registration. You can see my details on the third page. Really nice fluency, Alpha Forest. Um, Sammy says, here's my passport, which I used to book my IELTS exam last month. Please have a look. By the way, my personal details on the last page. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so Sammy says fluency, Alpha Forest says first impression, Ali Hatim says first impression, yeah. Um, and there is another reason, uh, I don't see it yet. Um, Onisim says to create a conversation, to prepare for long chats, yeah. Yeah, Tanya says for first impression, absolutely, so all of those. So uh, give a clear and full response to this uh, question so that you a remind yourself to be fluent b build up confidence and c um, create a strong first impression yeah absolutely Okay, so for all of those reasons, you want to answer that. So many students go with a sure, or here you go, or here it is, and it's kind of like, ugh, ugh. Um, yeah, no, just go with a nice full answer. So um, certainly, here's my passport that I had used uh, to register for my exam uh, online last month. Uh, please take a look. Okay. Uh, now, because you don't g actually give it to them, you, you're not going to say uh, my details are on the third page, but you're actually going to show it to them. So you flip to that page. Uh, if COVID finally disappears, hopefully, or starts to subside uh, over the next uh, half year or so as everybody gets their vaccines and we build herd immunity, um, then uh, once again, you will likely be passing your passport to your examiner and they'll check for themselves. They'll take a closer look, etc. But until then, you're showing your passport to them. Okay. So uh, again, repeat after me. May I see your identification, please? Uh, certainly. Here's my passport that I had used to register for my exam online last month. Please take a look. Notice these commas are important here. Okay. All right. Uh, now, while they're looking at your ID or thereafter, um, the next question that they're going to ask you is, what is your full name? And you want to keep going with that fluency, right? So answer this sentence in a nice full sentence, okay? Um, what is your full name? Mohammed says, my given name is Mohammed and my surname is Omran. Please call me by my first name, Mohammed. Very nice, and it's professional, Mohammed. Clear, fluent, professional, polite language is very effective to get high band scores. Absolutely. Janil says, my first name is Janil and my surname is Gabani. Please call me Jay for short because I'm used to it. 
Yeah, Janil, that's really good. Janil, I heard you got some nice scores on your exam just recently, and I'm uh, glad to see you in the class and continuing to learn. Uh, English is a lifelong process, everyone. It's not just for the IELTS. IELTS is just one step along your way of becoming a master of communication. So, Janil, it's really nice to see you in class even after getting a great score on your exam. Uh, Kashirsha says, my first name is Kashirsha, and my surname is Ronanova. Uh, please call me by my given name, Kashirsha. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that kind of correctly, Kashirsha. I'm, I'm a little bit poor with the pronunciation of uh, Slavic names. Okay, Arda says, my name is Arda and my uh, family name is Gurbuz. Please call, call, just call me Arda as everybody does. Okay, good. Mohammed Alamin, um, in English, please. Sarju says, my first name is Sarju and my surname is Magar. Please call me Sarju for short. Um, Sarju is not short for Sarju. Sarju is just Sarju. Um, if you call yourself Sar instead of Sarju or, or Say or something like that, um, then that would be short. Okay, so make sure if you're using that expression, call me something for short, then that's a short version of that name. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example, okay? So... My given names are uh, Thomas um, Peter and my surname. Uh, British use surname. Americans uh, use family name. Okay, so and my surname is um, Lee. Uh, please just call me Tom for short. Okay, so that would be short for Tom is short for Thomas. Okay, so here we go. What is your full name? My given names are Thomas Peter and my surname is Lee. Uh, please just call me Tom for short. Okay, Tom, uh, the interview has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. I'm recording this for marking purposes. This is candidate number 7352. The exam is taking place at the British Council Test Center in London. And uh, the time right now is 1,400 hours. That's what they do at the beginning. And then they ask you some questions. So they'll say for part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Uh, where do you live? So again, fluent, specific answers. Okay, so hint, hint. Um, be specific. Be original. Give details. Those sound simple, but they're very important. Okay, all right. So very, very important. All right. Uh, Kyber Moman says, I live in a two-bedroom apartment in the heart of Kabul with my parents, one sister, and two brothers. Very nice, Kyber. You're getting more and more dynamic with your responses. It's fantastic. It's good to do that. It's good to practice over and over and just say the same ideas differently. And then you will be able to adapt those to new information as well. Oftentimes, people think it's good to just keep learning new, 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 new information, but it's actually counterproductive. Often, it's better to go over the same information several times from different perspectives. And then once you uh, are introduced new information, you can dynamically uh, explain and adapt that learning, okay? So review, revise, and repractice. Uh, Mohammed Azat says, I live here in Bushar. I've been living um, here for five years actually. And yeah, it's a coastal city with some nice gardens and lots of shops. Okay, Bushar, don't go too much into the city. It's not, well, it's, it's okay to be descriptive like that. Um, maybe explain where exactly you live. Saga says, my hometown is called Uralsk and it is located in the west of Kazakhstan um, by the Caspian Lake. Okay, Saga, good. Um, where do you live? In an apartment, a farmhouse, um, a townhouse, a duplex? A little bit more, okay. Rashika says, I reside in a two-bedroom apartment on the second floor of a four-story building in Richmond, uh, near the Columbia River, which is located in the state of Washington on the Pacific Northwest of America. Very nice. So you're not going to be too far away from me, uh, Rashika, once I'm back in uh, Victoria. 
because the state of Washington is, well, just a stone's throw from Vancouver Island, where Victoria is. It's our neighboring state to the south of British Columbia. Uh, Janiel says, yes, I want to learn lifelong because my goal is that I achieve to match my level of English. Janiel, that's a fantastic goal. Absolutely. And even surpass my level of English. Um, lots of reading, lots of practice uh, will get you there, certainly. Okay. Ali Hatim says, I live in a three-bedroom apartment in Hibradad, uh, Telangana, which is the southwestern city of India, mm -hmm, which is a... Um, metropolis, okay. Uh, Ali, it's uh, Hyderabad, if I'm not mistaken, is quite a big city, so you can say it's a metropolis. Uh, use your lexical uh, resource. So, I live, um, or I think Rashika said this well, as I reside, why not paraphrase, in a uh, two bedroom apartment on the uh, fourth floor of a high-rise uh, building in the metropolitan uh, center of Budapest, not too far from the Danube River, about a kilometer away from the famous uh, Margit Bridge, okay? So being specific gets you points. Uh, of course, when you're specific, you're also using uh, more vocabulary. So you're showing more lexical resource. So being specific um, elicits a greater range of grammar and it also elicits a greater range of lexical resource. So you pick up a lot of points. Uh, here we go. Repeat after me. Uh, where do you live? I reside in a two-bedroom apartment on the fourth floor of a high-rise building in the metropolitan center of Budapest, not too far from the Danube River, about a kilometer away from the famous Margaret Bridge. Now, if this question comes up in a couple weeks' time, you're going to hear a very different answer, as I will be near the Pacific coast in the heart of Victoria. All right, um, next question. Do you have any hobbies? So here we go. Uh, do you have any hot, very typical, either do you work or study or what's your hobby? Those are probably the two most common questions that you'll hear in part one of the IELTS exam. So definitely be ready for these, okay? So um, <clears throat> do you have any hobbies? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, I got a little frog stuck in my throat. Okay, that's gone. All right, Asad Beck says, yes, I do. My hobbies are drinking um, a cup of boiled water every morning and playing video games. However, I'm also keen on um, writing songs, particularly um, rhyming words, like um, rap songs, kind of, I guess, Asad Beck. So almost like poetry, right? Uh, writing lyrics is usually better. Writing songs is okay, but writing lyrics. Lyrics are the words to a song. So it's more specific. Asad Beck, lyrics. Okay, lyrics. Okay. Uh, Juan Pablo says, when it comes to pastimes, I like to spend my time drawing um, with my favorite pens. It's pretty fun, and I enjoy creating new scenarios and forms just on a piece of paper. Very nice one. Uh, yesterday, I drew a couple of cars, and I'm going to upload them to Instagram later. Nice one. Okay, that's that nice little additive detail that'll get you points. So you're not only drawing figures and shapes with your favorite friends, but you've uh, drawn some just recently that we can check out on Instagram later. Perfect. Okay, that's being original, being real. Um, and keeping it real is super important in the aisle. So keeping it real is really, really important. Okay. Ali says, yes, I do have um, some uh, interest activities. I like editing different uh, genres 
and playing team games. Um, what do you mean, Ali, editing different genres? I'm not exactly sure uh, by what you mean. It almost sounds like you're mixing music. I'm not clear on what you mean by that. So be clear, okay? If the examiner is confused or uncertain exactly what you're saying, you're not going to get maximum scores, okay? So careful. Van Fum says, yes, I do. I go fishing in the ocean as well as go swimming with friends. These activities energize me a lot and teach me how to balance and stay calm in life. Just the other day, I swam 2K uh, near my home. Okay, Van Fum, not bad. Uh, let me do a couple of corrections to upgrade that, okay? So um, yes, I do. I go ocean fishing. Uh, for salmon, as well as I swim in the ocean with friends. These activities boost my energy and uh, teach me how to um, balance uh, work and play and stay calm in life. Just the other day, I swam 2K near my home, okay? A little bit, just a little bit uh, of touch-up. Uh, it's quite good, Van. Um, just smoothing out the wrinkles, okay? Rona Bella Santiago says, yes, I love to read books, especially historical romance novels or fiction books. My favorite books are the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling and the uh, Bridgertons by Julia Quinn. Very nice, Rona Bella. I like your examples as well. Okay. Um, historical romance novels, I would be thinking maybe something like um, War and Peace, uh, Tolstoy's books. But uh, yeah, no, it's great. I mean... Uh, IELTS examiner is not going to judge you for calling um, the uh, Harry Potter series uh, historical romance. Sure, let's go with it. Modern history romance, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Sam Perez says, definitely, I'm keen on studying natural sciences, specifically astronomy. I have a telescope, which I uh, like using during the weekends to observe and record the sky. Okay, very nice. Astronomy, beautiful. Yeah, with a telescope. Fantastic. Is it a lens or a mirror telescope? Give details as much as possible. Nicely done. All right. Good job. One more. Yavokir says, yes, I do. I'm really crazy about playing football with my classmates after school, and especially uh, at the weekends. I go to a sports center in order to play uh, ping pong. Very good. So athletic hobbies. Good. And uh, sports can be hobbies. Okay. So uh, yes, indeed. So do you have any hobbies? Yes, indeed. I have a couple of pastime activities that I indulge in uh, whenever I have a bit of time, such as in the evenings or on weekends. I'm Canadian, so I say on instead of at, uh, or on weekends. Um, I love to browse uh, eBay uh, for collectible coins to add to my uh, extensive uh, collection. As well, I like to meet up with my friends for a game of chess. Just last Saturday, I had a really intense two hour game of chess with my friend uh, Jeremy. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Lots of details and fluency. So flow, flow in your speech, flow from answers to explanations to examples. Um, here we go. Do you have any hobbies? Yes, indeed. I have a couple of pastime activities that I indulge in whenever I have a bit of time, such as in the evenings or on weekends. I love to browse eBay for collectible coins to add to my extensive collection as well. I like to meet up with my friends for a game of chess. Just last Saturday, I had a really intense two-hour game of chess with my friend Jeremy. He ended up checkmating me, but we had fun. All right. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going. Um, so 
couple of introductory questions, and then the examiner will introduce the topic of part one. As soon as you hear the topic of part one, really get into the mindset, okay? So focus on that introduction and start to associate words. So think about other words that are connected with that topic. So the examiner says, okay, let's talk about habits. Habits. Uh, what are habits? Can somebody give me a quick, clear definition before we get into this? So um, what is a habit? Okay. What is a habit? What does that mean? Not a hobbit, not a hobby, <laughs> but a habit. Okay. Hefes says it could be something like smoking. That would be an example of a habit. What's the definition for a habit? Okay. Uh, Ishaya says it's a custom. Uh, Sidra says it's a routine. Part says it's something you do on a daily basis. Um, Tanya says a habit is a routine behavior. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of an in-depth definition. So a habit is a routine behavior that a person practices regularly and often desires to do so. Okay, that's what a habit is. It's something that we do. We tend to like doing it. We do it often. We do it regularly. Okay. All right. So that's a habit. Uh, Gizem Jenis says, hi, Adrian. I just got my results. Watch your videos and applying your strategies. I got 7.5. Yay. Thanks a lot for these fruitful videos. God bless you. Uh, Gizem, fantastic score. 7.5. That's what kind of a native speaker gets without uh, putting in um, a lot of time to do practice exams, so that's that means you're basically at a solid native speaking uh, level of English, or at least for communication, so that's fantastic, okay? You should be proud of yourself. Uh, Gazem, send me an email. I'd love to get your testimonial, okay? All right, congratulations. Um, so here we go. Let's talk about habits. Um, we got one example. Before we go into some uh, answers here, think of a couple examples as well. This is what your mind should be focusing on. Somebody said smoking. Uh, smoking is a negative habit, obviously. It's not healthy, uh, especially when done excessively. Um, what are some other habits? So give me some examples of habits. Okay. So uh, video games, yeah. Muknadam says video games. That can be a habit. Uh, when a habit is something a person cannot stop doing, it becomes an addiction, okay? Uh, careful not to confuse uh, addictions and habits, okay? So drinking alcohol can be a bad habit as well, but that can also be an addiction, right? So drinking drugs, sure. Uh, nail biting can be a negative habit as well. Okay, um, Mahboob says, let's, let's not go that far down the dark side of life. Let's go with a little, some positive habits. Okay, positive habit could be like gardening. Yeah, what other um, habits would be considered positive? Okay, uh, playing basketball, it's not, I mean, it's not really a habit. We, we might um, say it is, but habits are usually uh, shorter activities. So, uh, brushing teeth. So, yeah. That's a good habit. Um, actually, one of the best habits that you can have is flossing. How many of you floss? Dentists around the world will agree that flossing is more important than brushing. Keep that in mind. That's just a little life hack or life tip for me. Uh, Mohammed says going to the gym with a G, Mohammed. G Y M. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. So sports and sports like going to the gym, uh, that could be a habit as well, but those are more like activities. Okay. Uh, brushing one's hair could be a good habit. Yeah. Reading books, cooking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, morning walks. Sure. 
Those could be ironing. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. So I don't, it's one, one, not my habit, but ironing. Yeah. People who iron their clothes regularly. Uh, waking up early. Peaceful sky. Very good. Yeah. That is a habit. If you wake up at 5 a.m., that would be considered a positive habit. Uh, meditation could be a habit as well. Drinking juice instead of alcohol. Drinking a glass of orange juice or milk. That's a common habit for many people. Absolutely. Okay, good. So now we're on the right track. Okay, so uh, what you want to do, students, is train yourself for this kind of thinking. When the examiner says... Let's talk about habits. You want to think, what is a habit? It's a routine behavior. Uh, why? Because the person usually likes doing it for some reason. It could be an addiction. It could be negative. It could be smoking, uh, video gaming, uh, drinking alcohol, biting one's nails. Uh, so lots of negative habits out there. There's also lots of positives like gardening, uh, brushing our teeth, flossing, going to the gym, lifting weights. Uh, ironing our shirts, waking up early, uh, drinking a glass of OJ. Those are all great, okay? All right, um, so now let's use these and create some complete answers for our examiners so we can get those high bands, those band nines. Uh, here we go. So the examiner says or asks, uh, what are some negative habits, okay? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one, okay? So what are some negative habits. Sidra, flossing is when you have a piece of string and you clean between your teeth, okay? Kyber says, biting nails and living a mediocre life are some of the unfavorable habits that lead to problems in the long run. Why, Kyber? Why are those negative habits? Explain, remember Kyber, explanation. Um, Kevin says, my pet peeves that are prevalent among people are biting their fingernails or shaking their thighs. <laughs> Not only are these behaviors unhygienic, but also frustrating to others. Just the other day, I was so upset sitting next to a guy who did not stop shaking his legs, uh, which moved my study table. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, Kevin. Um, so, uh, smoking and fidgeting are negative habits in my opinion. Uh, the former is simply unhealthy and the latter is really annoying uh, for others. I was sitting next to a guy in my IELTS exam who was uh, shaking his uh, leg and this was vibrating my chair and desk. I'm sh I just couldn't focus as much as I had hoped. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm just taking uh, your answer, Kevin, and giving a little bit of more um, natural language to that because I know what you're talking about. Generally, when somebody's shaking their legs or when they're moving their shoulder or something, uh, that's called fidgeting. Fidgeting is the, is the accurate term for that. So uh, what are some negative habits? Smoking and fidgeting are negative habits, in my opinion. Uh, these are pet peeves. So notice that uh, expression that Kevin's using, pet peeves. Pet peeves are specific uh, behaviors or situations that are really annoying for a certain person. We call those pet peeves, okay? So the former is simply unhealthy and the latter is really annoying for others. Uh, I was sitting next to a guy in my IELTS exam uh, who was shaking his leg and this was vibrating my chair and desk. I just couldn't focus as much as I had hoped. Um, not hopped, but hoped. Um, vibrating. Okay. It vibrates your desk and your chair. Very good. All right. Yeah. Uh, when the question is a plural, some negative habit, 
sa. Really pay attention to plurals. You have to give at least two, maybe even three. Okay, so give at least uh, two answers, even three, when you hear uh, plurals in the question. The examiner is listening for that, and if you're not giving more than one, uh, it's not counted as a full mark answer. Okay, so you have to give multiple, right? Okay. All right. Uh, Rajveer Singh says, drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes are some negative habits as both are detrimental for human health. Due to these negative reasons, governments around the globe impose extra taxes on alcohol and cigarettes to dissuade people uh, from taking them. Yeah, very nice. Rajveer, I love your use of vocabulary for dissuade. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. All right. Uh, Sandeep Yadav says, well, there are numerous bad habits such as reckless driving, speaking abusively, uh, nail biting, smoking um, are common ones. Uh, initially, um, I was not respecting elders, but later on I came to realize uh, that when I became older, nowadays I respect everyone equally. Okay, uh, Sandeep, sure, yeah, um, humbling yourself, great. Very nice. Okay. Nganha says, smoking and drinking alcohol are two of the most harmful habits, which could have a bad impact on our health, such as rep respiratory disease, digestive diseases, and um, mental health problems as well. Of course, with drinking, it's Korsakoff syndrome, where people start to become delusional. Um, okay. Here we go. Next question. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Uh, do you have any habits you want to change? So the examiner is moving along, asking you more questions. You're giving answer, explanation, example. Answer, explanation, example. I really want to drive these, this point home. So answer plus explain plus example, okay? Do you have any habits that you want to change? Okay. Do you have any habits that you want to change? We all do. Uh, you probably shouldn't answer, no, I don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm a perfect person. I don't have any habits I'd like to change. Uh, that would surprise me. Okay. Uh, Muzil Manka says, yeah, my habit, which I want to change is uh, laziness. Uh, because I prefer my spare time um, to learn experimenting rather than doing housework. Okay, Musil Manka, uh, let me give you some vocabulary here. So, yeah, the habit which I want to change is uh, my sloth. Sloth is if somebody's really lazy. Because I prefer um, in my spare time uh, to play around uh, rather than doing chores. Chores are, is a more specific term for housework, okay? Uh, Citra says, when someone clicks his pen constantly or when our family members use the phone in front of elders. Um, okay, Citra, those are negative habits for the previous question, I'm guessing. Uh, more details, Citra. Uh, Balbir Singh says, well, I do have some boring habits, like I always sleep late and I consider myself a night owl. However, I would like to change that to become an early bird. Like today, I woke up at 7 a.m. Uh, for some aerobic exercise. Very nice, Balbir. Yeah, early bird catches the worm. Night owl, early bird. Night owl, early bird. Not morning bird, early bird. Okay. Uh, morning bird sounds like it's okay, but the correct expression is early bird. Uh, remember, Balbir, the expression early bird catches the worm. Early bird catches the worm. Okay. All right. Um, Sammy says, uh, some of the negative habits. Oh, it's gone, Sammy. I can't find it next time. Okay. Janio says, as I've just mentioned about my binge watching that I want to fix, uh, because I've gained 10 kilograms watching TV on my couch, uh, and eating. So I want to, um, 
only watch maximum an hour a day. Uh, Jenya, we don't say repair in this case, okay? Uh, and the a nice expression, Jenya, there is couch potato. So I want to stop being a couch potato. So you can say, yeah, um, I'll admit that I'm a bit of a couch potato. Not only that, but I also have a sweet tooth. So I have a bad habit of sitting for hours in front of the TV while uh, munching on chips and chocolate. As a result, I have gained at least uh, 20 kilograms over the past couple of years. And I really need to get into gear and start doing some exercise instead of being glued to the tube. All right, so here I'm... Um, really throwing some idiomatic language at you as well. It's good to use idiomatic language, but just be really careful with it, students. If you're not using idiomatic language correctly, your mark will go down, and it will go down fast because incorrect idiomatic language makes conversation really awkward, like more awkward than using the wrong words, okay? It's like three times worse. Using the wrong word, a person might be able to guess what you're trying to say, but using the wrong idiom or an idiom incorrectly, the person will completely lose what you're saying. So bad idioms make your marks go down. So only use idioms that you are a hundred percent sure of. Okay. All right. Um, so here's a, a little bit firing away at you. Okay. So, uh, repeat after me. Do you have any habits you want to change? Yeah, I'll admit that I'm a bit of a couch potato. Not only that, but I also have a sweet tooth. So I have a bad habit of sitting for hours in front of the TV while munching on chips and chocolate. As a result, I have gained at least 20 kilograms over the past couple of years, and I really need to get into gear and start doing some exercise instead of being glued to the tube. Okay, glued to the tube means stuck to your TV. Okay. All right. So idiomatic language here, couch potato, uh, very visual. You're basically a potato on your couch, not moving, just watching TV. Um, sweet tooth. It's somebody who likes, um, junk food, especially sweet foods like ice cream, chocolate, uh, and, um, uh, get into gear means to um, become active, to start actively doing, okay? And then glued to the tube just means to uh, watch TV um, and zone into it without really doing anything else, okay? All right. All right, let's keep going. Uh, by the way, students, of course, whenever you watch these live classes or our videos, make sure to have um, your notepad open on your computer or a piece of paper on your desk and jot down any new words, new vocabulary, write down their definitions and use them in real time, okay? All right. Okay, uh, here we go, everyone. So let's go to this next question. Um, what are positive routine behaviors? So routine behaviors, another way to say habits, of course, it's all on the same track, okay? Um, what are some positive routine behaviors? All right. Uh, Niti Watt says there are habits which need to be solved. Since the first year of secondary school, I've been biting my nails. If I hadn't done this, I'd be able to get rid of this activity. Mm -hmm. Okay, Nitiwat, that's a little bit confusing. You need to clarify that a bit more. Okay. 
Uh, Kevin Bowie says positive habits that people practice include waking up early between 5 and 6 a.m. as they can um, kick a day off on a high note by working on some unfinished uh, work without background noise or taking in a breath of fresh air. Another admirable routine is to allocate at least 30 minutes a day to exercising, which certainly builds a strong body and a healthy mind. Uh, very nice, Kevin. And I like how you're rolling in those idioms. Again, just be really careful with them. They're okay. Um, it would be more natural to say to kick off the day on a high note. Okay, kick off the day on a high note instead of kick a day off. Kick the day or kick the day off or kick off the day. Okay. Uh, Sammy says a few positive behaviors are waking up early in the morning, doing exercise and having healthy food. These help everyone to be happy and strong and uh, live longer. This is why I eat an apple a day because an apple a day keeps the doctor away. <laughs> right, Sammy? So building in some more expressions for sure. Prathamesh says waking up early in the morning, going for a walk and doing some sort of exercise are really positive um, routine behaviors. After that, having a healthy breakfast is something I think is really good for everyone's health as breakfast is the most important meal of the day, or so they say. Uh, Mihir says, being an early bird and meditation are optimistic routines to maintain. They help to uh, drive a healthy life and make a positive impact. Meditation has increased my focus uh, towards my, uh, lifelong goals. Very nice me here. Uh, increase my focus and concentration, focus, concentration, they're synonyms. So just one me here is okay. You don't need both. Okay. Okay. Tanya says, um, it's a daily activity that I have that has a positive impact on health. For instance, okay. I think I missed something Tanya, maybe from before. Let me just check. Uh, is it way up there somewhere? Okay, I don't really see it, Tanya. So um, maybe that didn't get posted on my chat, which sometimes happens. Uh, for instance, daily training that uh, assists a person to keep fit. Personally, I'm fond of running in the park and getting some vibes from my city. Okay. All right. Hafez 17 says the most positive behavior that I enjoy when people are doing it is smiling more and being good listeners, great listeners. Okay. Very good. So being a good listener is a great habit. Yeah. So, um, regular behaviors that are certainly a benefit to people and society include eating at least one serving of fruits and vegetables a day, as this provides the necessary uh, nutrients for a healthy body and mind as well as paying attention to smiling simply by smiling people can increase their mood and overall health as well Smiling is contagious and will have a positive impact on the person's social sphere. Okay, this is why I try to smile as much as I can every day. All right, everyone, here we go. So um, what are positive routine behaviors? Regular behaviors that are certainly a benefit to people and society include eating at least one serving of fruits and vegetables a day, as this provides the necessary nutrients for a healthy body and mind. 
as well as paying attention to smiling. Simply by smiling, people can increase their mood and overall health, as well as smiling is contagious and will have a positive impact on the person's social sphere. This is why I try to smile as much as I can every day. All right, students, I think I'm going to end on that positive note uh, before going on uh, this adventure back to Canada from Budapest. But uh, fear not, um, I will be back on April 7th. And until then, we are releasing some new HD videos on the channel. Of course, you can check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. We've got lots of materials and HD videos for you there in our full course. It's definitely worth joining our premium package doesn't cost very much. It's one-time payment, lifetime access. Um, I will definitely keep smiling, Rajvir. You keep smiling as well. Uh, thank you so much uh, for everyone's support so far, and I really do hope that I get to see you uh, when I'm broadcasting from the great Pacific West Coast of North America. Uh, so I will see you in 15, well, 11,000 kilometers away or so. Um, and... Uh, until then, keep up the good studies. Make sure to practice lots. Much love to all of you wherever you are in the world. Remember, you're all beautiful, smart people. Don't let anybody try to convince you otherwise. Bye for now. See you in a while.